Uh, we go to Monica now in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, listening on Catholic Community Radio. Uh, did you get hit there in New Orleans with all this rain, Monica? I actually live in Lafitte, Louisiana, but I always say New Orleans because most people are familiar with New Orleans, but it's just about 20 minutes away. Um, uh, we did not get hit, thank God. Uh, thank are, you God. On the, are you on the other side of Lake Pontchartrain? We are on the West Bank. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. West Bank. Yes. I only know about um, that because I'm a big fan of Walker <laughs> Percy. Do you know who Walker Percy is? Oh, yeah. Um, no. Oh, a great Catholic <laughs> novelist. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, who, no, no, this is years ago. He lived down there on Lake Pontchartrain. Uh, well, I'm glad, you didn't get, I'm glad you didn't get swept away. What's your question for Brandon Vaught? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to share the faith by being a catechist. And I was really uh, dumbfounded when I found out that some Catholics believe that, well, I guess we're allowed to believe the way they talked about it, that we're allowed to believe in uh, evolution. I believed, and I was taught from kindergarten to eighth grade in Catholic school, that we came from Adam and Eve, and that was the story. And now I'm learning through going to classes that, oh, no, we were we came from apes, and the only difference is God put a soul in one of them, and there was the first man, and I was completely full, floored, and I said, I'm not teaching my catechism students that way. So I'm just wondering, what is the way? That's a great question and a loaded one, a controversial one. Uh, let me say a few things. First of all, uh, I think you were told correctly that the Church doesn't have an official uh position or an official teaching on biological biological evolution, on whether various life forms developed over time. Even concerning human evolution, the church magisterially, meaning officially, is neutral with a very important exception that even if man's body developed from previous biological forms, man's soul was uh, a special creation by God. So the soul didn't develop uh, out of natural causes. The soul's immaterial and was placed there by God. So the church has a wide umbrella. You can embrace evolution if you think the evidence points that way. You can reject it if you if you think the evidence points that way. But even within the umbrella of evolution, there are all sorts of different Catholics who hold different views. There are many forms of uh, evolution. And so it's important to get into the particulars of what somebody particularly believes about it before you either accept it or toss it away. Let me give you a couple of resources, though, that I found very helpful on this question. Uh, the first one is probably the, the one you want to start with. It's Pope Pius XII's uh, encyclical, Humanae, generis, which uh, talks about the origins of man. And in there, I think it's it's sort of the foundational Catholic teaching on these questions. So you want to start there. It's a, it's a fairly simple and short read. It shouldn't take you too long. So start with that document so you can get the foundation. Then from there, if you're looking for some good books, let me recommend two. One is a book by Cardinal Christoph Schoenbern, and I think it's called uh, chance or nothing or creation or nothing, something, something to that effect. But he wrote a great book on evolution and the origins of man. So pick up Cardinal Schoenborn's book. And then finally, Pope Benedict XVI uh, has a book that's sort of a collection of essays called In the Beginning. I believe he wrote it before he was pope. Uh, and it was sort of based on a symposium at, held at the Vatican about the question of evolution. And then Joseph Ratzinger collected his thoughts. So pick up that book called In the Beginning. And I think these three resources will give you a much clearer picture about what the church does and does not teach about evolution. Does that help you, Monica? Yeah, I, I have one more little question, if you don't mind. Um, what... Okay, so I I get, you know, different people's opinions, but then I also saw this YouTube video uh, from Ian, I-A-N, Catholic, and it was, um, you know, speaking on the matter, and he was saying, well, if you kind of discredit the whole thing about Adam and Eve, you whole, totally miss the original sin with, you know, the the serpent, and it might not have been an apple, and I understand that. But you kind of miss that whole story of original sin. Yeah, again, uh, I'd point you to Pope Pius XII's encyclical, Humanae Generis, because he takes up the question of the historical importance of Adam and Eve. 
Also, there's a really, really good uh, tract or article on Adam, Eve, and evolution on Catholic Answers website. So go to catholic.com, search for either evolution or Adam and Eve, and you'll find a a pretty lengthy but very clear and and clarifying article on these questions, especially on the historicity of Adam and Eve. So I'd point you there. Okay, Monica. God bless you. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Thanks very, very much there.